glamorous couple are stuck in a romantic clinch in a tiny sports car. But the guy can't move because he slipped the disc. <laughs> Fire department had to cut the car up to get him out of there. <laughs> I love it. Well, you haven't heard the end. When they get him out, the woman says, what do I tell my husband? It's his car. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Charlie? Page one? Only if we've got art on it. <laughs> Who was it that happened to? Nobody, Charlie. Just something funny that happened. Well, then why do you want page one? Charlie, we just... Forget it. Where were we? Um, what have you got for National? We already did it. Space shuttle, Mondale's trip. Ten books on petroleum companies getting into agriculture. Mm. Well, uh, I was just about to pitch the nice little piece that Burroughs did on the start of the Transpac yacht race. Animal has a good picture of the boats heading out to Hawaii. Wonderful. Stick it inside some. It's Mrs. Pinchon's pet project. Hmm. Look. There are a hell of a lot more important things to feature on the front page of this newspaper than a bunch of rich yacht club types and their sons sailing to Hawaii. Are you prepared to take the heat from the tower? Listen, they're giving you plenty of play on the other side of Winnie's society column. Anywhere else, it's an insult to our readers. Now, is that it for today? Good. Mel, I'm sorry, but we're supposed to be doing this busing thing together, and I just want to know that we're covering it right. I have been covering the Los Angeles school scene for 14 years. That's long enough to know that these meetings are strictly a formality. That's why I didn't stick around. Uh-huh. Then I guess we don't have to worry about not getting the story. What story? Well, you're right. It doesn't affect school board policy. But it was mildly amusing that a concerned mother of four tossed a cream pie at Dr. Henderson this afternoon. And it will probably take a man of your experience to analyze why the good doctor responded by pitching a carafe full of water at the lady. He did? But you're probably right. The radio stations that ran the story made too much of it. We, on the other hand, are making nothing of it. But I guess that's what they mean by news balance. Right, Mel? I'm about to deliver an ultimatum. My first? Before you do, Billy, let me remind you that you've only been over on this side for three months and that we have many veteran reporters who would willingly break a few arms to get some of the stories I've been handing you. Yeah, you've shown a lot of confidence in me, but... Ah, uh, not to mention the hundreds of bright kids just out of journalism school. Right, uh, don't even mention them. Who are lying in wait for someone just like you to slip up so they can get a break. Lou, forget the ultimatum. How about a sniveling request? I'll keep my eyes to the floor the whole time. Better. Shoot. With all my heart, I please never want to work with Kavanaugh again. The man's a lush. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to say that. I know. He's been at it a little hard lately. But he's got those sad, watery eyes. I, I can't get tough with him. I had a dumb dog just the same way. Sloopy, a basset hound. He'd bark all night, and I'd swear I was going to get rid of him. Then in the morning, I'd go out, and he'd roll over and show me those big eyes like he was going to cry. And I, I just didn't have the heart to do it. You're really a soft touch, Lou. Kavanaugh doesn't even bother rolling over. Listen, Billy, stay on the assignment. It's important. I'll pull Rossi off the tanker stuff and he can help you out. Rossi, Kavanaugh, and me on a story together. Mm hmm? That could be a better story than the story. Yeah. <sighs> well, thank you. This is a pleasure sharing an elevator with you, too, in the morning. <laughs> uh, they're, they're Italian. A special order, I get a dozen every year. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, no one else notices. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, you've made my day. Just a second, I'll put Lou on. Mm. What makes you think I want to talk to one of your Mooney girls? Because she publishes this paper. Hello, Mrs. Pinchon. What can I do for you? Charlie. The secretary said he wasn't in? He must
must have stepped out for a minute. Uh, I'll see if I can find him, and we'll be right up. Mm hmm. Okay. What's the matter with Charlie? I don't know. Something. Isn't this a beauty? Matthew had it on his ship, the sweet Margaret. And when he died, and I had to sell her. This is all that I kept. Doesn't keep time worth a damn. Uh, Mrs. Pinchon, can we get to whatever it is that Matthew you want? Matthew always said his first love was the sea. Now, the truth is, his first love was high-yield, short-term investments. But nevertheless, the man had many an exhilarating weekend on the ocean, and that's the way I like to remember him. With the wind in his hair and zinc oxide down his nose. And I like to think that that spirit of adventure still lives on in the Tribune. Correct me if I'm wrong. We all know what you mean, Mrs. Pinchon. You mean that Transpac boat picture, don't you? You wanted to run page one. Well, it just so happens we had a story with art that was a damn sight more important than... Space shuttle. The space shuttle. I am perfectly well aware of the importance of the space shuttle. But I did not think there was a law against putting two pictures on the same front page. Well, it was a choice that I made. And if you don't like it, you sit in on the budget sessions. You call the shots. I have given ten years to this paper. But if you don't have any respect for my news judgment, and if you don't like the job that I'm doing, fire me! You know what makes you a great publisher? You run such a creative shop that we all feel free to say whatever's on our minds and we know that you won't object. And you expect me to swallow that? I'd certainly be grateful if you did. Charlie's just a little off his game. He'll snap out of it. I'm certain he will. And I'm counting on you to urge him to do so quickly. Fine. That all? No. There's one other thing. Would you like to fill me in on your success in finding a new religion editor? Well, it's just that it's not so easy to find a really good reporter who wants that beat. There's all that Sunday work. Maybe you're being a bit too selective in your decision-making. You know, we cannot wait for divine inspiration. Right. Is that it? Thank you, yes. Mr. Grant. Uh, yes, Mrs. Pinchon. You will find out what's troubling Charlie, won't you? What's the matter with you? Huh? He's been gone a couple of weeks now. If you don't get back on the ball, I'm going to end up with your job, and I don't want it. Trouble at home? Mary? Yeah. No. You're not seeing that big blonde down in Classified, I think. Oh, Lord, no, Lou. I drove her home and one night her car broke down. Lou, what am I going to do? It's my boy, Tommy. Oh, my God. Did he crack up his motorcycle? Nothing's wrong with him. Physically, anyway. Forget it. Forget it. I even mentioned Charlie... I know what it's like. I'm a parent, too. I raised three daughters. You never had trouble like this. I never had any trouble with them. That was the problem. I had a bunch of great speeches all set. Flunking out, I had a speech. Drinking, I had a speech. If a guy got one of them in trouble, I had a long speech. Those daughters of mine, they were perfect. <laughs> Those poor kids, they, they never got the chance to find out that no matter what they might have done, I would have forgiven them. Because that's the way all my speeches ended. You're my kid, and nothing changes that. You don't know what I'm up against here, Lou. Not till you tell me. What's he done? On the end, on the right. Yeah. 
my son and heir. We gotta talk. Morning, Rossi. What's up? The education thing. Putting me on that story with Kavanaugh, I was a, it was a dumb move, Lou. Listen, I pride myself on being a self-starter, you know. I know. But I expect a little cooperation when I come in in the middle of a story. Kavanaugh won't show me his files, won't let me check phone numbers in his Rolodex. But what really frosts me is he won't let go of his thinking parking pass for the Board of Education, and he's never down there, Lou. Billy and I could really use it. I'll see what I can do. I've saved the worst for last. Billy'd never tell you this, but Kavanaugh won't even talk to her. He's told his buddies at the school board she's out to make him look bad. If you worry about your M, I'll handle him. Sit down, sit down. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. Thanks. Mal, you've been on this beat a long time. Yes, sir. I was telling the wife just the other night that I've worked with 11 city editors here on the trip. <laughs> I don't know, it uh, seems like it's been a jinxed position for all these years. <laughs> but like I told Shar, one we've got now is here to stay. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, Mal... <clears throat> No one knows better than you that education has become a very important issue. Which is... One, we think needs the best possible coverage. And that's why you gave me that little gal to help me out. Billy, yeah, right. I've given you the best, Mal. You know, I'll be happy to show her the ropes. No, Lou, I guess I'm getting old. Mm-hmm. I mean, you put in those 12 and 14 hour days until when you get home, it's, all you can do is sleep. So I told me that uh, I haven't taken her out to dinner or a movie in over three years. Yeah. Well, I never had any kids. Trib's my family. My life is this city room. Just keep up the hard work. You bet, Lou. Lou? Uh, Lou, w would you come here a sec, please? Marion called Tommy last night at the Hare Krishna place. He's asking us again to come visit him. Oh, hey, that's great. What's well, great? Lou, I don't want to see how he lives. The filth, all those creepy people, I'd rather not know. Are you sure it's that bad? It's the worst. <sighs> you know, all of those cliches are true. At first you think, am I to blame? And then you think, no, it's his mother letting him get away with murder all those years. Then you realize who's really to blame. Dr. Spock. Right. I raised him by that book. I tried to be the perfect father. You know, I, I, even, I even coached Little League for two years. That kid had the worst natural swing I ever saw. <laughs> hey, listen, why don't you go up to see him? At least, uh, then, if you all get together, something good might happen. Well, I know that uh, Marion would like it. Huh? Hey, w would you go with us, Lou? Ah, uh, Charlie, I don't think I want to horn in. It's not a private thing. They won't allow him to be alone with us. Tommy said to come to the festival Sunday. Please? Okay, sure. It'll give me a chance to find out why anybody would choose to be bald. <laughs> you look 
with a kid for 18 years, and suddenly he looks just like everybody else. How are we going to find him? Tommy, over here, honey. Uh, how did you spot him, Mary? Well, I ought to know my own son. Hare Krishna. Hi, Daddy. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. Hare Krishna. Don't you kiss your mother, Tommy? Vishnu Das. What kind of an answer is that? Well, that's my name now, Vishnu Das. It means servant of the Lord. I don't mean any disrespect to your mom, but not here. Oh, I understand. That's fine. Ah, uh, son, <clears throat> this is Lou Grant. An old friend of your mother's and mine. He's the uh, city editor down at the paper. Hare Krishna. Hi, kid. So, Vishnu... Vishnu Das. Vishnu Das. I'll get it, dear. Just give me some time. So, Vishnu Das. <laughs> so strange. Are you eating? You look thin and pale. It's these clothes. They fit loose. But I feel great. Instead of wasting my time lying on the beach, I'm, I'm filling my day with Krishna's work. Isn't it amazing how much of our lives is spent surrendering to the flesh? Like I was so blind. And sleep. Mom, do you remember how you had to fight to get me up in the morning? Every day of your life, except Christmas. All the devotees rise at 4.30 every morning. It's really a joyous thing. I guess it's because I finally have something to get up for. Krishna's mercy. Terrific Tommy. Come home, I'll get your paper out. So, uh, Krishna is uh, your god now. Krishna is the original form of god. Baron, why don't you and uh, Lou go uh, look at the place? Tommy and I'll have a little talk. That's a good idea, dear. Come on, Lou. Nice and easy, Charlie. Want to go inside? I'd like to show you the temple. Hey, you got to take your shoes off, Dan. Do I, uh, have to shave my head? <laughs> These are different manifestations of the Supreme Lord, Krishna. Uh, uh, it's uh, the mail you've been getting. It's mostly junk stuff. And uh, this motorcycle magazine wants you to renew your subscription. Thanks. Hey, how do you plan to ride your motorcycle on that thing? I don't. Somebody else at the temple's using it. Uh, I don't need it. You saved two years for that. How are you going to get around when you leave this place? I don't plan on leaving. Of course not. <laughs> You've got very short memory. Are you forgetting your eternal devotion to that girl who moved to Illinois? The one you saved up to send the airplane ticket to? I'm glad she cashed it in. Dad, this was inevitable. Everything in my life has brought me to where I am now. My life is full of joy and serving and praising God. I'm happy and peaceful. Just don't start asking for money when you can't get enough by begging in the streets. We don't beg. We distribute our spiritual literature and accept donations. Right, fine. You just go ahead, Tommy. Break your mother's heart. Deny the name of your family. Distribute your spiritual literature. Let these people take your money and destroy your mind. But you're not going to get my approval, ever. I'd like to share the joy I've found with you. But you can take it or leave it. 
Tell your mother I took a cab. And try not to give the car to the temple before she gets back. That's okay, Mr. Grant. I was chanting. Boy, this place is really something. Where's your dad? He went home. Well, good, you got some food. Yeah, where should we sit? How about here? I mean, uh... Oh, I can get you a chair. No, 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 no. You're really gonna love this food. Hmm? It's made as an offering to Krishna. Um, what's this? Bitter melon. Now, that one's kind of an acquired taste. Try the salad. Mmm. Yeah, this is good. You know, I've seen you people on street corners, and I wondered. Don't you feel self-conscious jumping up and down in public? I didn't think I'd have the nerve to do it. You know, people staring at you and all. But when you start chanting, the love of Krishna takes over. By chanting Krishna's name, I get to share that love with everyone. You sure got an answer for everything. That's one of the things that's so good about my life now. Everything makes sense. Not to your dad. Oh, I just couldn't resist this stuff. I got books for your sister. I thought Joni'd be interested, and I got the incense for myself. I probably never use it, but where's your father? He left. Took a cab home. Here are the keys to the car. I really wanted this afternoon to work out. I thought if the two of you would talk. I want to stay and talk with you, but I really think your father's going to need me right now. Sure, Mom. It's too bad you can't stay. Later on, things really get going here. Bye-bye, dear. Oh, right. I know. I, I just forgot. Stay well and uh, keep in touch. You're allowed to write, aren't you? I will. Hare Krishna. It's good to meet you, Mr. Grant. Yeah. So tell my father I uh, love him in a way I hope he'll someday understand. I'll tell him. Maybe not tonight. But I'll tell him. Good kid. Thanks. You just said the perfect thing. Hi, uh, sir. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, we know what you're going through, and uh, we just want you to know that we're here. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Look, Shirley and I have been through all of it. We know how you and your wife feel. That, that card has Bill's number at work. And our home phone as well. Please call any time you need support. Remember now, no matter what you're feeling, you're not the first. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, sir, uh, this one thing, I, I know it's none of my business, but uh, 
Well, I couldn't help noticing that you're treating your wife uh, like she's a stranger. If, uh, if you could just uh, show her a little affection, because she needs you now more than ever. Okay? Right. Thanks. Bill. Shirley. Okay. Not my kid. Some smug little machine that'll only say what he's been programmed to say. So self-righteous, I wanted to smack him. There's nothing like someone who's gotten the word, is there? No lie. Girl I know from high school joined up. Never tires of trying to convert me. Me. You know what angers me the most is the way they try to mask this weird stuff as religion. All that communal business, men and women living together under the guise of holiness. It's not a guise, Charlie. Philly, tell me what you were telling me. Uh, just that I did a, an article on it a couple of years ago. And they're very straight-laced about sex. They feel that uh, denial of the flesh is an important factor in living in grace. Even the married couples, they only sleep together to have children. Now I know Tommy must be drugged. Same thing there, Charlie. They don't allow drugs. In a lot of ways, the Krishnas are a very conservative group. Their business sense would impress Dunn and Bradstreet. They're into book publishing, incense. Yeah. Meanwhile, the kids who work for them live in poverty. So do a lot of nuns and priests. Oh, come on, Lou, not you. I'm going a little crazy. I tell you, it's getting to me the way everybody is trying to be so fair to whatever the latest fad happens to be. Except this one has a tradition that's 5,000 years old. Their roots are in Hinduism. I'm talking about a kid who was normal, who now wanders through airports, handing people books and flowers and nagging them for money. He bothers people. I know, I know, it's embarrassing. There are worse things. Not now, not to me. Coffee, anyone? Hey, Charlie. A couple gave me a card yesterday. They thought I had a kid at the temple and offered help. Maybe you'd like to give them a call and uh, see what they can do. I'll try anything. Bill and Shirley Ballard. There you go. We gotta get one thing straight right off that uh, we're not talking about religious freedom here. We're talking about brainwashing. I was in Korea, I know. You think the guys who run this cult are malicious? Well, I don't know about the guys who run the Krishnas. Uh, Kim wasn't one of them, but I know that all cults are the same. Their eyes light up at the mention of money. Bill says it's all money. Tell me how you got your daughter back. Well, of course we... I tried to talk to her about how crazy she'd been acting, but most of the time we couldn't get near her. And when we did, she'd been programmed to be suspicious of us. <laughs> when we found out she turned over everything she had to them, the car, the stereo, <laughs> even her ski stuff, well, we just knew we had to do something. Well, anyway, we, we found a lawyer who'd helped out families like us who'd lost their kids. And he helped us to get a conservatorship. In court? Yeah. We convinced the judge that uh, Kim had gone out of her mind. And we should be appointed her legal guardian. The judge was terrific. I, I guess he could see what we were going through because he granted us the conservatorship right away. We took Kim to Hawaii for a couple of weeks, and she pretty much snapped out of it. Now she's our little girl again. And we couldn't be prouder of her. Do you really think she was crazy? Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. What about you, honey? Are you glad your mom and dad did what they did? Um, well... At first, I was just furious. I, I mean, you know, like, who are they to tell me what to do? But it's like the judge said, I must have been crazy to throw away everything for those strangers. It, it just wasn't me. They were letting other people make up my mind for me. 
take it from me. She's right. I still can't get her to make her bed in the morning. Oh. <laughs> so, anyway, he is a judge, and, you know, the government says that he can decide who's crazy. So, he must know something. Um, more, um, pie or coffee, anyone? Sure. Thank you. That pecan pie is great. It's the best I've had since I was a kid. <laughs> Thanks. I made it. It's a little tricky to do, but I like cooking, so it's no big deal. <laughs> yeah. So, Kim, what are you doing nowadays? Oh, it's just super. When um, I came out of that, you know, sort of bunk I was in, mm -hmm. well, it's like coming back to the real world. Of course, it took me a little while to decide what I wanted to do, Oh, you know, my parents, thank God for them being so understanding. They just let me take my time. Anyhow, now I know where I'm going and how I'm going to get there. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. See, I'm working part-time for Daddy, and I'm taking night classes. You know, it's really great to be into something meaningful, because I always wanted to help people. What are you taking? Real estate. Charlie, I know it's late, but can we go over this list of people for a religion editor? I don't think we have any serious candidates, but Mrs. Pinchon just sent down a snippy little note about waiting for puffs of white smoke to come up the stairwell. Not now, Lou. You're going through the judge thing, huh? You bet your life I am. You know who my closest friend is? My oldest and closest friend. Me. Oh, right. I guess I mean my closest Los Angeles friend. Me. Well, how about my oldest and closest friend who isn't you? Who? Ken Harrelson. Judge Ken Harrelson. He's known Tommy since he was a kid. Mm. I told him I needed some personal judicial advice, and he said he'd see me after work. Marion's coming with me. She and I had a long talk last night. God, I feel great. Listen, Lou. Tomorrow morning, first thing, I'll go through this list like a house of fire. I promise. Marion, do you think your boy is crazy? Yes. I'm sorry, Charlie. Now, I'm familiar with these kids, and although it would break my heart if one of mine joined up, I, I just don't think they're crazy. Ken, listen, we're, we're talking about Tommy here. I know, Charlie, I know. You know what? You don't need a judge right now. You need an old drinking buddy. And my advice, as your old drinking buddy, is to learn to live with this raw deal your kid has handed you. I thought that maybe you could... Do you know that my sister's a cloistered nun? For the last 20 years of my parents' lives, all they ever saw of her was the sound of her voice and the back of her head at Easter Mass. Of course, because they were Catholic, they felt they had to understand, but it was still tough. So you're not going to help us? He's trying, Charlie. There are other judges oh, around, Charlie, you know. Don't. All right, all right, sure. You can shop around. You you might find one who's sympathetic, but they're not as easy to find as they were a couple of years ago. Now, as much as it may hurt both of you, it appears that the Constitution protects a kid's right to make a fool of himself or to find salvation, whichever it is. Oh, Lou, it, it gets worse instead of better. I thought that session with Ken last night would help. Now Charlie is starting to think everybody is against him, including me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He talked to those parents again, mm -hmm. and they gave him the name of a guy who talks kids out of their beliefs. The deprogrammer? Mm. I pulled a file out of the newspaper I've been reading up on him. I think that's what Charlie is planning, deprogramming. If he is, he isn't telling me, and I'm scared. Oh, I wouldn't worry about Charlie. This thing has him upset a little. But he won't let it throw him. Oh, stop it, Lou. I don't want to be talked to like a wife right now. Are you going to tell me what you really think about this or not? I'm, I'm worried, too. About the deprogramming. 
maybe. I don't know about that one yet. But here's a man. The most reasonable man I know with a terrific head on his shoulders. And suddenly he's not able to use it. And it's that that has me a little scared. What should we do? I'm afraid we're going to lose Tommy if he goes much further. Marion, it's, it's really out of our hands. But uh, I promise you this. I'll keep a close eye on him. I'll watch him like a hawk. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. We pulled some material on the cult and a whole lot of contradictory stuff from experts on whether or not these kids are brainwashed. What do you think, are they? I think any kid who survives sitting in front of the tube for 18 years and isn't interested in whiter teeth, fresher breath, or moister cat food probably is not a likely target for brainwashing, but I'm not an expert. Where do you read the stuff on deprogramming? Help me get him out of there. That's what I'm here for. Charlie, this is your fault. You spoiled him. And now you have to pay the price. Listen, Charlie, I'm, I'm being tough on you. Because once you understand what's at the heart of this thing, then you can take action. It's not too late for Tommy. But you've got to take charge, giving back his mind. Listen, I really hate in the middle of all this to have to bring up the subject of money, but... I don't... What we talked about before, that's fine with me. I, uh... I can write you the check right now. Anytime. Give an honest face. But, uh... Let's try and set up a meeting for tomorrow. Okay. How's this gonna work? First, we have to get him out of that temple. Onto neutral territory. Now, we could use a motel, but I'd rather not. Do you have a friend with the place we could use? Well, loose place, maybe. I'd have to check with him first. I'll get back to him on that. H how do I make this out? Make it out to our foundation. That's Parents for Freedom. No sense giving the IRS more than they're due. And tell him you've reconsidered. Yeah. That uh, you think what he's doing is swell, and you'd like to talk to him about it. Now, don't overdo it. Don't promise to put a sacred cow in the backyard. I'll never buy it. And try and get me to come alone. They always come in twos. But it's worth a try. In the meantime, I'll alert Mitch and lay in some supplies. Who's Mitch? Uh, Mitch is Tommy's protection in case the cult tries to get him back. He's been with me on every assignment. He's a good listener. Uh, makes better coffee than Joe DiMaggio. And he can go days without sleep. I wish there were some way I could thank you aside from this. Seeing you and Tommy together again, that'll be reward enough. Relax. You've hired the finest. Come at night. God, it's finally going to be over. I feel so relieved. Really bad writing. Give the job to Kavanaugh. This thing he just turned in is... Donovan? I owe you one. Kavanaugh! Come here a minute. We'll be right there, Lou. What can I do you for, Lou? Well, Mal, you've been on this paper a mighty long time. As you say, this is your family. Well, it's nice to be appreciated. And I think I've found a place where we'll be able to use that special, sweet style that is Mal Kavanaugh. What's that, Lou? Uh, congratulations, Mal. You're the Trib's new religion editor. The religion editor? That's right. And I can't think of a better man to interview the clergy, take ministers to lunch. Are you kidding? Detail the theological frontiers, both here and abroad. That stinks! If you stick me with a rotten job like that, I'd quit. Quit? You haven't even begun to give it a chance. You can't quit. The hell I can't. You watch me. <laughs> I mean, oh, that was beautiful. You're just watching a pro do his job. That must be Tommy uh, Mal. Oh. Well, listen, uh, it, it's probably a couple of guys. Huh? What do you mean? 
What's going on? Oh, good morning. Uh, Lou, these these two men are gonna help me uh, talk to Tommy. Oh. Yeah, this is Orrin Houston and his associate. Mitch Collins. Lou Grant. Well, Lou, it was real nice of you to help Charlie out this way. You're a mighty good friend. That's what he keeps telling me, right, Lou? <laughs> uh, well, I guess you better get underway. Uh, Lou, how's your coffee? Good enough. Yeah, uh, Mitch, go in there and make us a pot of your coffee. Huh? It's the best. Take it from a guy who's really hooked on this stuff. Nothing to worry about. It's just like having a house guest. You have locks on these windows? No, just the usual hardware. Mm. Well, uh, we're gonna have to secure them from the inside. Mitch always brings a hammer and a flock of nails. You're gonna be nailing my window shut? Charlie. Listen, Lou, I'll replace anything that we roll. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, gentlemen, we haven't got much time, okay? Uh, the doorknobs are gonna have to come off. Just, just, what are you gonna be doing here? <sighs> we're going to be talking to Tommy. Now, these precautions are for his own safety, so that he won't be hurting himself. Uh, Lou, do you have a straight back chair? In the kitchen. You have a bad back? No. Uh, it's easy for Tommy to concentrate when he's sitting up straight. Oh, oh, I see. You're going to lock him up here in the house. And then if he doesn't want to sit down, you're going to have to restrain him. Isn't that the way it works? <sighs> Sometimes. Hey, are you going to have to tie him up? All right, now listen, Charlie, we're at a critical moment here, so you better listen to this. This is just that time when the client starts to panic about his kid. How can I subject my flesh and blood to this kind of thing? All right, I'll explain it to you. Now, we're not talking about a few hours of discomfort here. We're talking about salvaging a kid's life. And for a job like that, they're going to be one boss, me. Now, that's what you pay me for. Now, are we straight here? You're, you're not going to hurt him. <sighs> Charlie... You're not talking to a sadist. I just want your kid returned to you. And just remember what got him into this bind in the first place. And give me the space I need. It's a good thing we stopped for the ice, Soren. Lou's defrosting. Mm -hmm. Ice? Uh, the ice is a stimulant for Tommy. Oh, you mean if he tries to fall asleep on you, you put it under his arms or under his feet, stuff like that. Now, that usually does the trick. <laughs> that sure would straighten me out. Remind me not to start chanting around you guys. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. Uh, if you're going to be going at this day and night, uh, I, I don't know how to ask this. Will there be a lot of noise? Naturally, Lou would like to keep things as quiet as possible. But the fact of the matter is that vocal intimidation is a critical part of any deprogramming. Vocal intimidation? Uh, he, right, right. You mean screaming at the kids? Huh? The kids ever scream back? Oh, but good. Now, now, if you didn't know what's happening, you might get the wrong idea. But all we're really doing is just letting them know who's boss. Hmm. What, what if he gets away? Then, Lou, we do whatever's necessary to bring him back. That's our job. Funny. Sound like kidnapping. He's here. It's Tommy. Anybody with him? He's alone. <sighs> he believed me. He's alone. Uh, well, he's early, but it's okay. Uh, you answer the door, Charlie. And don't tip your hand too quickly, okay? No. Yeah, Charlie. Get rid of those guys, will you? I'd be glad to. Yeah, take them out the back way. Yeah. Get them out of here. Hare Krishna, Dad. Let's go for a walk, son. Hey, Oren. Uh, yeah, hello. Have I ever shown you my back door? It's really a wonderful back door. It opens right out onto an alley. You and Mitch are gonna love it. Uh, 
Mr. Grant, call me Lou. Uh, this way, Mitch. Follow Orrin. Just open the door. That's it, right outside. So when you called, I asked some of the devotees what would be good for you to read. They gave me these. I know it seems like a lot. Son. Yeah? Uh, stay, stay in touch with us. Um, even if it's just to preach to Mom and me, don't cut us off. Sure. Well, thank Krishna I can tell you about the joys of spiritual life for hours. You know, there's a quote in here. Hold these, will you? It's in Sanskrit. I can't read Sanskrit yet. I mean, I, I take classes every day, but... What it says is, I hope I get this right, like... We're created for Krishna's enjoyment, and... If we serve his desires instead of our own, then... We all become happy. Do you see what I'm trying to say, Dad? Yeah, I'm trying. Do you see what I'm saying to you? What's that? You're my son. And nothing changes that. CBS Late Movie.